In the same way that SwiftUI makes UI development easy, Quora Mail makes machine learning easy. How easy? Well, once you have a trained model, you can get predictions in just two lines of code. You just need to send in the values that should be used as input, then read what comes back. In our case, we already made a Core ML model using Xcode's Create ML app, so we're going to use that. You should have saved it on your desktop, so please now drag it into the Project Navigator in Xcode. Just below info.plist should do the trick. When you add an ML model file to Xcode, it will automatically create a Swift class of the same name. You can't see the class, and you don't need to. It's generated automatically as part of the build process. However, it does mean if your model file is named oddly, then the auto-generated class name will also be named oddly. In my case, I had a file called betterrest1.ml model, which meant Xcode would generate a Swift class called betterrest underscore one. No matter what name your model file has, please rename it to be sleepcalculator.ml model, thus making the auto-generated class be called sleepcalculator. How can we be sure? Well, just select the model file itself, and Xcode will show you more information. You'll see it knows our author and description, plus a list of inputs and their types, and an output plus type too. These were all encoded in the model file, which is why it was, comparatively, so big. Let's start by filling in Calculate Bedtime. First, we need to create an instance of the Sleep Calculator class, like this. Let model equals Sleep Calculator. That's a thing that reads in all our data, and will output a prediction. We trained our model with a CSV file containing the following fields. Wake, when the user wants to wake up. This is expressed as the number of seconds from midnight, so 8 a.m. would be 8 hours multiplied by 60 multiplied by 60, giving 28,800. Estimated sleep, roughly how much sleep the user wants to have, stored as values from 4 through 12 in quarter increments. And coffee, roughly how many cups of coffee the user drinks per day. So in order to get a prediction out of our model, we need to fill in those values. We already have two of them because our sleep amount and coffee amount properties are mostly good enough. We just need to convert coffee amount from an integer to a double so Swift's happy. But figuring out the wake time requires more thinking because our wake up property is a date, not a double representing the number of seconds. Helpfully, this is where Swift's date components type comes in. It stores all the parts required to represent a date as individual values meaning that we can read the hour and minute components and ignore the rest. All we then need to do is multiply the minute by 60 to get seconds rather than minutes, and the hour by 60 and 60 to get seconds rather than hours. We can get a date components instance from a date with a very specific method call, calendar.current.dateComponents. We can then request the hour and minute components and pass in our wake-up date. The date components instance that comes back has properties for all its components, year, month, day, time zone, and so on, but most of them won't be set. The ones we asked for, hour and minute, will be set, but will be optional, so we have to unwrap them carefully. So put this directly below the previous line in Calculate Bedtime. Let components equals calendar.current.dateComponents, an array of hour and minute, from wake up. Let hour equals components.hour or zero times 60 times 60. Let minute equals components.minute or zero times 60. That code uses zero if either the hour or minute can't be read. But realistically, that's never going to happen. So it will result in hour and minute being set to those values in seconds. The next step is to feed our values into CoreML and see what comes out. This might fail if CoreML hits some sort of problem, so we need to use do and catch. Honestly, I can't think I've ever had a prediction fail in my life, but there's no harm being safe. So we're going to create a do catch block, and inside there use the prediction method of our model. This wants the wake time, estimated sleep, and coffee amount values required to make a prediction, or provided as double values. We just calculated our hour and minute as sections, so we'll add those together before sending them in. Please add this code to calculate bedtime now. Do let prediction equals try model.prediction wake double hour plus minute estimated sleep sleep amount coffee double coffee amount. 
then more code here, and in the catch block, something went wrong. With that in place, Prediction now contains how much sleep they actually need. This almost certainly wasn't part of the training data our model saw, but was instead computed dynamically by the CoreML algorithm. However, it's not a helpful value for users. It'll be some number in seconds. What we want is to convert that into the time as you go to bed, which means we have to subtract that value in seconds from the time you need to wake up. Thanks to Apple's powerful APIs, that's just one line of code. You can subtract a value in seconds directly from a date, and you'll get back a new date. So add this line of code after the prediction. Let sleep time equals wake up minus prediction.actualsleep. And now we know exactly when they should go to sleep. Our final challenge, for now at least, is to show that to the user. We'll be doing this with an alert, because you've already learned how to do that and could use the practice. So, start by adding three properties that determine the title and message of the alert, and whether or not it's showing. At state, private var, alert title equals NB string. At state, private var, alert message equals empty string. At state, private var, showing alert equals false. We can immediately use those values and calculate bedtime. If our calculation goes wrong, if reading a prediction throws an error, we can replace the something went wrong comment with some code that shows a useful error message. Alert title equals error. Alert message equals, sorry, there was a problem calculating your bedtime. And regardless of whether or not the prediction worked, we should show the alert. It might contain the results of their prediction, or it might contain our error message, but it's still useful. So put this at the end of calculate bedtime after the catch block. Showing alert equals true. Now for the more challenging part. If the prediction worked, we create a constant called sleep time that contains a time they need to go to bed. But this is a date rather than a neatly formatted string. So we need to use Swift's date formatter to make that look better. Date formatter can format dates and times in all sorts of ways using its date style and time style properties. In this instance though, we just want a time string so we can put that into alert message. So put these final lines of code into calculate bedtime directly after where we set the sleep time constant. Let formatter equals date formatter. Formatter.time style equals dot short. Alert message equals formatter dot string from sleep time. Alert title equals your ideal bedtime is dot dot dot. To wrap up this stage of the app, we just need to add an alert modifier that shows alert title and alert message when showing alert becomes true. So please add this modifier to our vstack. Dot alert is presented dollar showing alert. Alert title text alert title, message, text alert message, dismiss button, dot default, text, OK. Now go ahead and run the app. It works. It doesn't look great, but it works.